Here we are in our Educa K-16 podcast. This is an orientation, orientation session for our listeners and our audience to find out who we are. A little bit about Educa K-16. So my name is Sandra Gonzalez. I'm an educator. I've been an educator for 30 years plus maybe in the uh, District of Columbia, Maryland, Virginia area known as the DMV in um, DC public schools and charter schools. My area has been K-12 and I continue to be in the adult education world. With me today, I have Dr. Abdin Novoa Rios. Welcome Dr. Abdin Novoa Rios. Thank you. Good to be here. It's good to be here with you. So Dr. Abdin Novoa Rios and I met through uh, my venue where I work. I'm the director of a GED program for adults in Washington, D.C., Carlos Rosario School. And he was there doing uh, our evaluation for our program. And we met and he let me know he was writing books about Latinos in education. And we have stayed in contact ever since. His books have come out and I am going to inform you of them a little bit. So let me get here close to the screen so you can see this is the first book, The Story of Latinos and Education in American History. And the second book, it just came out recently, guys, Critical Issues of Latinos and Education in 21st Century America. Where are we? Well, Dr. Abdino Barrios wrote these books before the pandemic, before the COVID hit us and we had to go out in March and we've been out, right? Working from home, uh, the education, system has been just having to uh, reimagine itself and, and, and be creative. So welcome, Dr. Abdino Boarrios. Tell us a little bit about your books and your inspiration to be here with us. Thank you. Well, in, in, in a nutshell, I've been dealing with education from different points of view, previously as a teacher, as an administrator, as a federal worker with the government, uh, and then on my own as a researcher. And, and so I've seen it over time and always with a focus on the Latino community and came to the conclusion that America is in dire straits, primarily because the education system is in dire straits. And as education goes, so does the future of the nation. And from that perspective, I began to dig further to begin to understand more in depth what it is that's going on in the US in education and what it is for minorities, students of color. And so that led me on a long voyage to rediscover some things that I did not know in terms of our history, and that became challenging. And so I got all excited about it. And I started uh, reading, uh, researching, uh, looking back at the literature only to find out that Latinos had been left out of mm -hmm. a lot of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. history. And so the question was, okay, so where do we go from here? What do we do? And so I launched into the process of trying to discover, trying to learn, what that history was uh, and why it was that we were not in it as we should have been. And so that led to basically my first book, The Story of Latinos in Education. Uh, where are we, why are we, and so forth. And then bringing it up to the 21st century, why is it that we're still in the quagmire that we're in? And so that ended up talking about critical issues that are facing the 21st century. And uh, that became uh, bookends basically on Latinos in education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as it was um, a bit of a, a, of a path for me to take, I hope that I can convey 
that I have conveyed that properly to my audience because it's exciting, it's new, it's novel, um, a little bit maybe entertaining, um, a little bit depressing, but ne ne nevertheless, our story. And uh, if we really want to find out where we are today, we need to find out where we have been in the past. And so in a nutshell, that's- that goes for everything, not just education, right? Everything. And, 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 and what, what's interesting about education that we, we oftentimes forget is that education ends up being the institution that really guides the nation. If there is inequality in education, there is inequality in society. And so one leads to the other. Education basically is the thermometer for a country. And uh, our data, by the way, in the US ha has not been positive the last 20 to 30 years. And we are on a decline. What do you mean by that? It, it has not been positive, our data. Well, we, we're on a decline uh, when it comes to education. That is, uh, the United States used to be the foremost uh, leader in education, very ahead of other industrial countries. It has slipped quite a bit. Now it is ranging around, around uh, close to the middle, middling among the, the, the large industrial uh, countries called the OECD uh, uh, countries. Uh, there are about 50 to 60 of them. And uh, we're losing it by all international tests in the area of math and in the area of science. And now more recently in the area of geography and general uh, or, uh, verbal skills. Why? Because the rest of the country, uh, of the world, is catching up with us primarily because of online education, primarily because of connectivity. And so in the age of information, knowledge is power. And in the age of information, digital learning has become the norm. And so as a result of all this and a number of other variables, but we have been slipping and we have been slipping because our students of color have also been slipping. So I wanna stop us there because I don't, this is an orientation to Educa K-16. I hope that our audience has been uh, has been tickled, has been, you know, ignited to continue to listen to us at Dumas Education. We are a separate entity. We don't belong to any school. We don't belong to any system. We don't belong to anyone except to our own group. Educa K-16 keeps placing students at the core of all of their conversations. So we are cultivating curiosity and raising awareness in the United States, East, West, South, and North to support our audience to develop an open mind and empathy and be less judgmental of what's going on, but get more involved. It's a call to action so that you know what's going on. So this podcast is for students, for parents, for all stakeholders in all school systems, for policymakers, right? I mean, anyone who's an educational change agent should Everybody. listen to this podcast because anyone who's an educational change agent should be reading these two latest books. This is not an easy read, folks. It's not an easy read because it's packed with information. That is one of the reasons that Dr. Novo and I decided to collaborate and to sort of distill the book, both books, but not just distill the books, but also bring it to light with what is happening today. I mean, this was planned before the pandemic and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit us and we're like, wow, we have to be inclusive of what's going on today. This is the reality of our nation, of the world today. So stay tuned. Become a voice, listen to us, and uh, you can go to D-O-M-A-S-G-R-O-U-P.com to get this information, dumasgroup.com, D-O-M-A-S-G-R-O-U-P.com to receive this information. 
It has been a pleasure to be here with you. Stay tuned for episode one when you learn a little bit more about Dr. Abdigno Barrios and how he was involved in gangs in the barrios growing up. We have to give a, a shout out to DTO Music for the Nameless Energy piece of entrance and exit music that he has given us. Thank you so much. You could check him out on Instagram, DTO Music, Dave Kemp. See you next week. Thank you.